Today, I thought I'd make this really quick kind of impromptu video about how to make sprite sheet animations using just HTML and CSS. Uh, it's kind of this underutilized animation technique that I think can have a lot of really cool use cases. Uh, in, in my particular case, I, I do a lot of game development on the web uh, using you know, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so this is a really common animation technique for games when you're dealing with sprite sheets. But I, I don't think it's just, just limited to games. Uh, there's a, a lot of cool opportunity to use this kind of thing in your UI or to have um, maybe more like interactive experiences where the sprite sheet reacts to the user input. Uh, you can kind of go nuts with this. And so, um, however, it's... It doesn't often come up uh, when you're like researching animation on the web and stuff. So I thought it'd be cool to make just like a really quick tutorial video on how I approach this kind of thing and then kind of give you the tools to go off and make your own stuff with it. Um, and so what I th have done here is just created a, um, a code pen with kind of the final result of what we're going for. See, there's this character here that um, he's walking. He's got like this marching thing, this stop animation um, frame by frame thing going on. And so we're going to just kind of zoom out and break this thing apart and see how it's built. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is just kind of pop over here and make a new pen on code pen. Uh, all I've done so far is just, uh, add a body background color. Uh, so we're not stuck with white. Um, and so, yeah, let's just go ahead and get started here. Uh, first, before we start like writing code, I want to kind of just break down exactly what we're going to be doing. What we see here is one character on the screen, um, and we only see one frame of him at a time. But under the hood, what we're actually looking at is a sprite sheet that kind of looks like this. Um, if you see, what we have here is 16 different frames on the screen, but it's all contained to one image. And so when you see our dude marching over here, what we're really seeing is just uh, one of those frames being displayed at, the, at a time. And so to do that, it's really just kind of this fancy magic of uh, taking the sprite sheet, putting it inside a container div, and then cropping, um, positioning the sprite sheet where we want it, and then cropping out everything else so that you only see one at a time. And then um, under the hood, while that crop is happening, we can move the character in this kind of like jumpy way that then reveals only one frame of him at a time. And so the end result is that uh, it kind of looks like he's walking where you see frame one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, just like that. Um, and the other thing that's cool is that right now we just see him walking down towards us, like facing, facing downwards. But uh, I've also prepared a little mechanism that we'll walk through uh, to be able to change the direction that he's facing. And so uh, if you remember from looking over at this sprite sheet right here, we have the down facing frames on top, but then we also have him looking right and then him looking up and him looking to the left. And so what I've done here is just kind of made these quick utility classes where uh, here in the code, which we'll walk through in a second, you can uh, add a class like face up. And then see now if you see the browser refreshed and so now the character is facing up and we see um, the up frames happening or we can do right. So you see, like if you're making a game or something like that, that's pretty interactive. You can uh, get a lot of mileage out of just one single sprite sheet. So yeah, so let's let's go ahead and just uh, start diving in here to our empty pen on Code Pen. And so, like I said before, the the thing that we're really dealing with here is just a container that has a sprite sheet in it. And um, so let's go ahead and just make that div. So we'll, we'll say it's a, a div with character. And then inside the character, we want to add that sprite sheet image. And so I've um, sort of cheated a little bit. I have my assets ready to go here. So I'm going to paste in the link. And then the alt, we'll call him um, character. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and give the sprite sheet its own class name. Uh, I kind of like the BEM style class. I break the rules a little bit, but uh, the idea is that, um, you know, this class is always going to be used inside a character. So it has like the character namespace kind of baked into it. You can name these classes however you want. It doesn't matter. Alrighty. So we have our sprite sheet on the screen. See that, uh, that we have this one image here that con contains all the frames. And so what we want to do now is accomplish that crop where, um, 
we don't want to see all frames. We only want to see one uh, at any given time. And so what we're going to do is start by just cropping out the, um, the first one. And so it really is um, simple as giving our container div like a height and width. Right now, I'm just going to hard code this to uh, 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And, and you can kind of see that working if I uh, give it a background color. See now just the top left frame has that red. That's because, again, uh, the sprite sheet is nested with inside the container div. And we haven't done anything to like not let the overflow be displayed. Um, and so, you know, CSS savvy people will know that um, in CSS we have a rule that can be applied called overflow hidden. Um, uh, Overflow hidden, just like this. And then now you see everything else uh, from this character has disappeared. And so we're only going to see the top left frame. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this background color because of it. We have on screen uh, shows the high level concept of, of the sprite sheet is there. And we've just cropped out one, one uh, frame of it. But what I'd like to really demonstrate now is kind of what's happening under the hood. Um, without jumping too far. And so what I'm going to do is kind of copy over the animation I had before, just for time's sake. Um, and so what I have here, I've, I've defined a keyframe animation uh, called Move Sprite Sheet. And it does this really simple thing where uh, using Transform Translate 3D, we're going to uh, take the image from its original position and then move it 100% of itself to the left. Uh, and so we'll, we'll demonstrate what that looks like really quick. But uh, the cool thing about using something like transform translate 3d not only is it uh more performant in the way that it uh utilizes kind of more horsepower of the computer um, and doesn't require as many repaints and stuff don't worry about that um it it allows us to move the image relative to itself which is really handy so rather than caring about exact pixel sizes or anything like that we can just say uh, move it 100 negative 100 percent of itself and it just will do it perfectly uh, so if you have a different sprite sheet that doesn't have uh, the same amount of frames, you can keep like popping or reusing the same keyframe animation and you'll never have to change it, which is awesome. So uh, that being said, let's remove the uh, overflow hidden. And so now we see all of our frames again. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I actually liked this. Um, kind of background example from before. So now we see that the crop has um, the background color again. So that that's what's visible. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. And so um, not to the character container itself, because remember, that's just the container, the thing that has the background color. But I'm going to come up here and grab this uh, character sprite sheet class uh, and add a apply this animation to it. And so how you do that is animation, and then you give it the name of the animation, um, uh, and then a time. And so I'm going to start this at like one second. And then, um, ha, see, it's starting to work already. See, do it. Um, if you see it, move to the, move to the left. And then uh, next we're going to do, uh, the, here's the magic. We're going to utilize uh, what's called steps. And steps looks like this. Uh, steps. It's a uh, CSS like easing function, just like linear or ease in or ease out. Um, but what it does is it says, do this animation in this many distinct steps or this many distinct jumps. And so for us, uh, again, what we're telling it to do is to complete the movement from uh, where we are now all the way over to the left um, in, in this many steps. And so we're using a sprite sheet that has four frames per row. So we're going to just plop in four there and then give it the infinite so it'll keep playing. And then there you go. You see our dude, um, the sprite sheet under the hood is just moving to the left in these four distinct jumps. And it looks kind of funky when you see the whole image moving. I just wanted to uh, show that to, to demonstrate that that's what's going on under the hood. But, but it really starts to come to life when you put that overflow hidden property back on. So here's what that looks like. There you go. And now you see our character in the top. Um, don't worry, we're going to work on sizing him up in just a second, but let me remove that um, property. And now you see we have the character uh, walking in place. Now let's take a look at how we can uh, get this character a little bit bigger on the screen. Because as you can see, he's, he's very small in this corner. And the demo I showed you before, uh, the character was much larger. And so uh, there's going to be some uh, some techniques we use here. Uh, 
first thing I want to do is like we're, we're dealing with pixel art here. And pixel art, if you're not familiar, um, it, it's this really kind of specific art style where everything is done in in perfect squares. And so if you see this character right here, uh, kind of the gap in, in his corner of his head and then his hands and his legs, they're all made up of the exact same size square. There's no angles. There's no... Uh, like sometimes the squares are smaller or anything. Um, it, there's always just this one unit. And so we want to utilize that here. Uh, it's going to be kind of play a pivotal role. And I, I'm going to do that using a CSS variable. This is just like an HTML and CSS demo, you know? So um, if you're using a like a JavaScript uh, CSS and JS library or you're handling your styles in a different way, that's totally fine. Uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it to uh, just HTML and CSS. And so these days... Uh, we have CSS variables. And so up here, I can define on the root, I'm going to make a new variable called uh, pixel size. And pixel size is just going to be the number. Uh, so I'm going to start with six. And then we'll see in a second how we can play with that value. And the art will just uh, resize appropriately, which is super cool. Um, and so anyway, uh, like I said before, we had hard coded the container to be 32 by 32 because the sprite asset we were working with was all designed in 32 by 32 pixel frames. Um, however, that doesn't matter. Like we, we don't, we shouldn't have to care about that. We should be able to display the art as large as we want. Right. And so let's go ahead and use this, um, CSS variable to multiply the width. And so to do that, we'll use calc. Um, and we'll say it's going to be 32 times the, uh, variable we just made and you give it the variable called pixel size oops sorry i can't type and talk at the same time um and i think we're going to do the same thing for the width too just make sure that that's working uh and so let's see if we do some red driven development here. Yes, see that this is much larger. Is it actually working though? I think I might have to do pixels. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now, um, now we have a relative height and width for this character uh, that is set. I don't know why height's not working. Oh, because I have, oops, my bad. All right. So I leave the stuff in here because this is the kind of stuff we mess up all the time. Um, now we have a, a square that it's still square, but it's much larger than 32 by 32 because I'm multiplying it by six every time. And so I can come up here and change this to like 10. You'll see the box get bigger. Um, however, the character you see is, is not changing. That's because we're only resizing the container right now and not the inner character. There are people screaming outside my door. Uh, so I'm gonna put this back to six and then down here um, to uh, solve that problem. It's no big deal. It's the same idea. I'm going to copy over the width line. However, uh, I need to do this important change where we change the uh, size of the character sprite sheet to actually match the actual asset. And so in our case, we have uh, four frames by 32 pixels each. That's going to be a total width and height of 128 pixels. So if I just pipe in 128 here, see that the character kind of snaps to the perfect size. And one more time, just to demonstrate kind of what we're doing, I'm going to remove this overflow hidden, like so. And um, yes, yeah, so and so, so you see the entire asset is here. It's been there the whole time. We're resizing the whole thing. Uh, but again, this crop is happening, uh, which kind of just gives us that illusion of the stop frame animation. OK, anyway, so over overflow, overflow hidden is back on there. Removing the background. One thing you will notice is that this image is looking blurry. Um, and that's because we're using an image larger than its actual size, where this image is only 128 by 128. Um, so it's got a nice small like file size, which is, is great for the web uh, to have it load nice and snappy. But we're using it larger than it actually is. And so the browser under the hood is like trying to compensate for it and blurring it because of that. And that's not good. We don't want that. However, um, we have this cool solution uh, where there is a CSS rule that can be applied. It's great for pixel art. I've got it over here in my example, image rendering pixelated. And so 
um, one thing I like to do is just kind of, it depends on the size and scope of your project, but it's nice to have this little utility class called like pixel art, or you can call it whatever you want, but we're gonna make a new class and uh, use this image rendering pixelated. And what that's gonna do is tell the browser, uh, it works great on image tags and canvas tags too, um, that it's it's gonna have all of this like pixel art or, or anything that's designed in this nice like square chunks of color to multiply upwards evenly uh, and not try to blur them, not try to compensate or anything like that. That, that would be more appropriate for like a photo um, but not for pixel art. We don't want that. We just want our nice clear colors. And so all we have to do is um, apply this new class to our sprite sheet. When I add that on there, you see that the image immediately crisps up. It looks a lot nicer. So um, good stuff. And then because of that, remember we still have this variable that's, that we can play with. And so I can size the character up to 10. Uh, and this pixel size again means like, uh, it's, it's basically saying like, for every pixel that is uh, in the artwork, show that like 10 times what it normally was, uh, which is sweet because if you have, um, maybe you're doing a mobile game with nice high resolution or uh, you're doing like a responsive game where you wanna resize the art based on how much screen size you have, it's a really common use case. You can do that through CSS variables, you can do it through um, inlining JavaScript styles, however you're doing it. The point here is that we have a dynamic size um, which is very cool. Use that in all of my games. So our character here is looking is starting to look um, pretty cool, but there's a few more things I want to add. Um, for one thing, uh, he looks kind of flat without anything else in the image, so I want to give him the shadow. So over here, if you remember from the original, uh, I had the shadow asset, and um, this is going to be kind of a example of um, if you are making a game or something similar you want to position things within each character this is kind of how you do it so the shadow is going to live in the same character and what i've done here is just pasted in an image um, it's cut the exact same size well almost it's cut the it's cut the size of one character frame so 32 by 32 uh, it also has this pixel art style and so um, what we want to do is upsize this as well uh, apply our crisp class to it so that it looks nice and crisp and then uh, position it kind of under the character. You can see I have it in the DOM now, but uh, its presence there because of its uh, current styling is actually pushing the character down. And so what we want to do is um, let's make a new class for just the shadow. Um, character shadow. And then under here, uh, we are going to have it be position absolute. And then because it's position absolute, we want to make its container uh, position relative, uh, which will enable us to kind of move the character around and the shadow will move with it because the, the shadow is going to be positioned relative to the, kid, the character's top left corner. Um, and then we need to size it up, just like we did with the um, character if we can just copy this over um, there you go and so now we see that the characters um, the shadow asset has as the same rules applied and I you saw me copy these rules over you can totally like abstract that into its own class so that you don't have these duplicate rules just for the sake of video this is uh, fast and easy it's gonna depend on your project you know how things are organized how things are reused that kind of thing um, but we still have this blurry problem where the shadows is looking blurry. And so because we have that nice reusable pixel art class, we can just use that here. Um, I feel like that's a pretty safe rule to abstract into its own class. Uh, and now we have the crisp uh, character. And now we have this nice kind of character component, if you will. If I inspect just the character in the inspector, see that blue square um, that's just like a module that we can take and, and move around. And so whether that's the char a character in your game or that's uh, something that you implement as part of your UI, all the animation work we did just kind of lives inside this class or inside this box. And so what we can do is take the box and you know give it like margin zero auto to center it in its current container. Um, maybe move them down from the top. However, wherever you want to put them, it's going to depend on you know how you're using it. Maybe size them up big, um, and there you go. So it's a like kind of a 
potentially responsive. We're not doing anything to change this value on the fly, but we easily could. Um, and uh, we have one asset that scales however we want without losing any quality. And the file size is really nice and low. Uh, it's excellent. So the last thing I want to show is uh, kind of like how I started the video demonstrating the different directional classes. Uh, right so far, all we've done is have this character march downward facing us. But if you remember from the sprite sheet, let me pull it up again, that uh, we have four different directions to work with here. We have the frames of him looking down, frames of him looking right, up. Um, it's all contained in the same asset. So if we want to switch the direction that the character on screen is facing, we don't have to like download a whole new asset or anything like that. We can just display different frames here uh, that we already have. So far, we've only worked with moving and um, kind of animating the frames to the left, like horizontally. Uh, but we'll, what we want to do now is kind of utilize some of this vertical territory that we have to show these other frames. And we're going to do that using the real, um, pretty much the same thing that we've been doing before. Um, I'm going to create a new class called face right. And in it, it's going to um, establish a, a top rule. And the top rule is basically just going to move that inner crop um, to um, not start at the top left corner, but in, instead have this little bit of a vertical offset so that we can access those frames that we're not using yet. And I'd like to kind of show that in the dev tools first, because I think it's a little more clear. We see this, and um, if I take the character sprite sheet and give it a position... Uh, absolute, we'll just use absolute, and then uh, top, give it a negative top value. You see that I can like move, oops, going the wrong way. Um, if I change the top value, I can move which, like where that, where that larger sprite sheet is, and therefore kind of adjust what we're seeing out of the crop. And so if I just toggle off uh, character again, so that the uh, overflow hidden, it's kind of hard to see, um, or it's kind of trippy to look at when all the frames are moving. But all we're doing is moving kind of where the image starts. And so again, if I play with that value, and look, keep your eye on that shadow. The shadow is what we're gonna show. But just by changing the top value, I can change like which way the character is facing. And then if we um, put that crop back on for some sanity, um, you know, it's a little bit more clear. And so, to do that, I'm just going to set up some utility classes, like this first one that we've got, uh, face right. What it's doing is setting the top value to negative um, uh, 32, but against the current pixel size. And so, if you take one more look at this asset, you see that the right, the the row of character frames uh, where he's looking to the right start 32 pixels down from the top of the asset. And so, here's the natural size of the asset: 32 pixels down from zero is like here-ish. That's where the right row starts. If you go another 32 down to the 64 pixel mark, that's where the up row starts. And then finally the 96 pixel mark um, is where he's starting to look left. Um, and so because I know that, because you know I made the asset, I can go in here and I know which kind of values to use here. So up. So if you had a different size asset, you might have to play with those. Um, and you, there's different ways in your workflow. You can go, not down, how about left? different ways you can go to um, kind of automate that. It's going to depend on the project, but th that's kind of the higher level uh, principle, how, how it works. Oops. And now we have these classes set up. And so what I can do is just put it right on the sprite sheet. Oh, you know what? I need to make the sprite sheet absolute too. Absolute. There we go. Uh, again, so that, uh, that we're... So far, we haven't been moving the um, the actual like position of the sprite sheet until now. So that's what we're doing only vertically, where the appearance of it is moving left because of that CSS animation. Anyway, let's try throw in this class on there and see if it works. Okay, so now the character sprite sheet itself has um, face right. You see that the character is updated to be facing towards the right. You could swap that out with like up. Now the character's going up. And so here you can see how, um, you know, if you were making a game, you could uh, tie this to the arrow keys being pressed. You know, like when the right key is pressed, go ahead and put on that right class on the, the right element. Um, 
if you were doing something, I don't know, maybe you could do something with the mouse where like the character is always going to look towards where the mouse is. There's all kinds of different fun stuff you can do. And we can get all of that done with just this one asset and this one kind of cropped um, container, cropping container. So, Alrighty, that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. Um, hit that like button if you want. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, I've got some more plans. So go ahead and subscribe if you're into that. And I will see you next time. Later.